Would you look who it is? Johnny Key, welcome back to the vlog. Yes. How are you doing? I'm great. We just got to the hotel. I'm here with Johnny Key. I feel great. I'm a little scared about what's going to happen at night, but I feel good. He needs me. Let's go, Luke! Come on! Luke Talbot. What a race. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. It's your favorite blonde duo, Johnny Key, Luke Talbot. Johnny Key with a fresh haircut, by the way. When did you get that haircut? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, Roberta fixed me up on Tuesday. Roberta? Roberta. Roberta the G. Yeah, so I, I feel bad for cheating on my boy Austin, but um, I just needed a little trim, you know? I didn't need anything special. Like, I think I just told her off the ears, off the eyes, and... What do you know? It's off the eyes and it's off the ears. Ah, it doesn't look bad. I'm mean, twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. I would do a lot of things for twenty bucks. I would yeah. do. I have done things for twenty bucks. But no, I mean, like I normally pay forty, and it's like for a little trim, twenty bucks. It's not bad. Listen, I got so many compliments on my haircut that I gave myself. <laughs> my boss came to work, and I showed her the video of me cutting my hair, and she was dying laughing. And she's she's looking at my hair, and she's like. How did you cut it so evenly? I was like, I'm just him. What can I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sure, I was like, what can I say? Um, sure. I think I think a video idea could be like we cut each other's hair. Thoughts? I think I think we hit up our favorite New Balance athlete and ask if she wants to come cut my hair. All right. Anyways. Um... Uh, Anyway, so Moving let's jump into, the, jump into the podcast today. We're going to be breaking down the NCAA Division I Nationals predictions because, you know, that's happening in Dude. one day of time from when this podcast releases. And I, I'm, I'm going to be I'm pretty honest with you. I got some pretty hot takes. We were talking about this yesterday, me and Johnny. Johnny Extremely was surprised hot. that I, I was, was saying this. Dude, should we go with the safer takes out of you first and then jump in the hot I mean, takes? You want me to jump in? Mine's, right? mine's not even safer. It's just like probable which like, would be safer i don't have any well yeah but it's like well, okay if i was a gambling man which i am not <laughs> <clears throat> yeah i feel like my takes are definitely the favorites and luke's is like plus 500 That's yeah what I, I think i think it's a little more than 500 but i'm down to jump into it so, okay, so who do you I'm want who, who are we going first who's going first what do you want to do um Let's just go straight up, straight up. Give me your, give me your top five straight up. Top or, five, I got top three. Well, give I me give top you top five, and then give me some teams that you think are going to be up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, I need to pull something up. Then I want to make sure that I have all the uh, the uh, the top teams from the that's recent fine. rankings. Yeah, so that's fine. I will say on the men's side, I do have BYU taking it all in first. And like I was telling you yesterday, I have OSU, Oklahoma State, uh, taking second, disappointing second place. I think they're going to be coming to this, to this race knowing that they have the possibility of winning. And I, oh, think yeah. gonna, I think they're going to be in a tight competition with BYU, but unfortunately, they're going to come up short. They're going to take second. It's <laughs> going to be rather disappointing for the Oklahoma State, uh, I don't even know, what are they? Cowboys. Cowboys? I was going to say Cowboy yeah. Jimbry. That makes sense. For the Cowboys. And an absolute, unbelievable shock to the system. Nobody saw it coming. Number six ranked NYU. At NY, NYU, NAU. no flipping no. way. That is so hot. That is, that is a burning take. That's a big, that's a big take. No, that's NAU huge. coming out of nowhere to clinch the top three, the third position, take the bronze. And yeah, they're going to go, uh, go third. Uh, with Mike Smith's last year as the director of XC and TF over there at NAU on the men's side. And we'll hear more about the NAU team when we jump over to the women's side. But uh, yeah, I think they are going to take third, and Arkansas is going to just barely miss out on a top three placement, <laughs> finishing fourth. And I think the big thing here is that the Arkansas boys just aren't going to have a good day. You seen? Great day. Unbelievable performance out of seen. I've never seen him run better in my life. Mm -hmm. The rest of the Arkansas guys, the old men at Arkansas are just not going to be able to get it done. So, and the so you old think... men at BYU are going to be able to get it done. And the old men at Oklahoma are going to kind of fall short, but second is second. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to just pause you for a second there. 
So you don't think Patrick Kip- Kiprop or Karami Yego, you don't think they're going to be – you think they're going to have they're bad days? They're not even getting top three, in my opinion, individually. I, I don't know about individual rankings, but I know Patrick Kiprop has to be one of the people in the mix to win the entire thing. This is a guy who – he won SECs. He won uh, – uh, they're probably in the south. What are they? Are they region? Are they? Maybe. Uh, they Southern are in the region. South Central re- region, South Central. which really, I mean, they won that no contest. There isn't really anyone too crazy in that. Um, yeah, I mean, runner-up was Tulane. Tulane has a very good guy. I don't know his name. No, but, riddle uh, me this. Was Patrick Kiprop the guy who broke the 8K uh, grass record? I, I want to say yes. I want to say yes. It was one of the Arkansas guys. Listen. I know I'm making hot takes. It's probably, I mean, what I'm saying might not happen. The Arkansas guys are unbelievably talented. I, like, let's not, yeah. you know, let's be serious for a second here. They are a, I would not be surprised if they won nationals. But I'm just, I just got to take some hot takes. I just got to throw yeah. out some. Yeah, no, I get right that. You know, there, so you know, you know, the, uh, I sent you a post from a uh, track, whatever. Track stuff. And I, I already, track yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah, I have that. They, up, they're, in their humble opinion, they had Arkansas. Both of them, I don't even know who they are, but both of them had Arkansas winning it at all, which is... I don't know that's, if... That's a fire I don't know take. If, I don't know if they're saying they're winning. It just says podium. It doesn't say first, Oh, second, that's, that's flipping. It whack. just says Whatever. podium. So I don't know Whatever. what their rankings are. That's whack. So I read it as they're on the front, but you know yeah. what I mean. But I do um, understand what you mean. Um, also, to go along with that, Traxta, uh, what you were saying... Which is interesting because the uh, Alfie has Patrick Kiprop in the top three, but George on Traxta does not. And I will say, I'm actually rocking with George's picks. These are picks that I personally had, uh, hey, and I didn't, I didn't need to see what George was saying. But uh, shout out Traxta. They're the goats. They know what they're doing over there. Um, anyways, I have my top three finishers in this order, by the way, uh, at Nats. Wisconsin, Nutty Comb race. Not Nutty Comb, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, for, the, for the 2024 season, I have Parker Wolf taking first place at Nats. An unbelievable performance. He's coming for blood. He's coming for Pedro. Um, Pedro obviously being Graham Blanks. If you didn't know, Graham Blanks used name Pedro for president on uh, Instagram. I don't know if it still is. It probably is, to be honest with you. But regardless... Uh, Parker Wolf, newly minted Nike NIL deal. He is feeling the best he ever has. Graham Blanks is coming off of uh, a little bit of an injury, I believe, going into the uh, through the summer, I want to say. I feel like we knew he was injured after cross country season. He ran that insane mm-hmm. 5K indoor, breaking the national or the uh, collegiate record, and then was injured into the track season made a guest appearance over at Hayward Field for the uh, 2024 Olympic Trials. Uh, obviously, he lost to Parker Wolf, but had the ranking to go to the Olympics, so he ended up representing for the 5K at the Olympics, if I'm not mistaken. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I just think this is Parker Wolf's year, though, to be quite honest with you. I think Parker Wolf is going to take that title with Grand Blanks in second. Uh, an, an unfortunate finish for grand blanks you know after winning last year he wants to go back to back you know he 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 doesn't have the nico young he doesn't have the kai robinson he's got the parker wolf and my third place guy optim samuel i think uh i think i think optim is gonna take take third overall i think he's uh johnny will be right back he's got to go get his his pizza go go you leave get out of here (laughs) my timer went off my bad you already knew you already knew so as I was saying, I think Optum is going to take third. Uh, you know, the New Mexico guy, I think he runs for New Mexico, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. Johnny Key really is the NCAA guy uh, when it comes to running. I'm much more focused on the pro uh, running scene, and I try to stay relevant when it comes to the college scene, but there are definitely going to be some times where I'm lacking with that knowledge, and Johnny's just going to have to jump in and save me, but... Not the end of the world by any means because I do have a general idea of what's going on at the top. And like I said, I do think that it's going to be Parker, it's going to be Graham Blanks, and then it's going to be Hobson Samuel from New Mexico taking third. 
And yeah, I don't think any of the Arkansas guys are even going to be in the top three, to be honest. I don't know that they have it in them. I think Patrick Kiprop is uh, probably got the best chance besides Yassine. Obviously, I think Yassine's probably going to be maybe top sorry. 10, I'd say, for sure. Like, I have a lock top 10. I hope so. Yassine. You know what he, um, I, don't, I don't know what he got last year, but. Well, I don't know. I think his best play with Smith was like 22nd or something like that because he was okay. all American, but. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was. I don't. Rem- I feel like last year he didn't have a great race. To be quite yeah. honest, with you. it's just tough because I feel like he's just. I feel like it. It's just hit or miss. I feel like there's some races he's just so good, and then there's yeah, some races that I'm just like, that. "What's going on?" And I feel like that's like the Arkansas just way. To be honest with you, and I should I feel say like they've way. been on all year. To be honest, I shouldn't say way. I just feel like they flip. They flip a lot. Which is fine if your top five is consistent, but I feel like they all aren't like a consistent. This is your one. This is your two. This is your three. This is your four. This is your five. I that, feel like they do bounce five, around. They definitely I feel like do your top five around. flips it, and I feel like that's a huge problem because if your four has a great day, but isn't, but sh- is like your two and your three has a crap day and becomes your six, like th- that could be a problem. So. That definitely worries me for Arkansas going into the Nats, but uh, yeah, those are my those are my hot takes. My those are your takes for okay. the men's side. Johnny Key, <laughs> talk to me. So, if you want me to go individual first, or you want me to go team, a uh, team and then individual. Okay, Please team. Ob- I don't like Arkansas winning. Not that I have anything against Arkansas. Uh, I definitely think it's going to be between BYU and Oklahoma State. And the thing about BYU is they don't really have um, a one. Like they don't a, have a one guy. They have, I mean, they have Klinger. Don't get me wrong. They have Klinger and Corrigan who are pretty solid. But I feel like Corrigan and then from then on, there's kind of this pack. And so it's all going to depend on that pack. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I think Klinger is better than their pack. Don't get me wrong. I think it's going to depend on how high Klinger finishes and how high the pack finishes. Obviously, that's how that works. Um, I think with Oklahoma State, I think the spread, I think the beginning spread is a lot closer and a lot higher up than BYU, but I think the late spread is kind of where BYU's team needs to be in front of. Um, but I I don't know. I think I I don't know who I got winning, but I think I'm going to say I think I'm going to say BYU over Oklahoma State and then in 3, I do want to say Arkansas. Um, I think Iowa State and I think New Mexico has a chance. Um, I mean, Iowa State, they're not right there with Oklahoma State, but obviously they got second at uh, uh, Big 12s and second in the region, I'm pretty sure. I think they're in the same region. Um, but I, I also, I do love New Mexico, dude. I think Captain Samuel, I think he's, I think he's the guy who's going to win it. He won 10K for track. I think he's going to win 10K for cross. I have him. I have... Um, Just, hey, don't forget that uh, the boys running the 5k did not double in the 10k yeah so i know it was a little I know, uncontested i know but still he still won um i think i have him and then god dude this is hard i i you like patrick you... kiprop but he's a little he's a little streaky you know what i mean you cannot tell me this is not about to be a parker wolf master class no i do i you know I'm far, i love me some parker wolf and some ethan strand um both all americans last year i think I do like Parker Wolf at three. I don't know if he's gonna win. I don't know if he has. I don't know if he has it in. Did he win, win but... Nuttycomb? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I I have the two Nuttycomb winners winning individual titles at. Trust uh, me, I thing. really want Parker Wolf to win. If there's anyone that I want to win, I'd say Parker Wolf. But that's my podium. Um, I have Samuel taking it. Um, in the three spot. I do like Arkansas at three. You know, I, I am sticking exactly to what the rankings say. I do like Arkansas at three. I think their team's a little stronger than Iowa State, even though I don't even think they even seen each other. Um, mm-hmm. But, I, dude, I like New Mexico. I think I think there can be some switches from three to five. Um, NAU, your hot take was NAU uh, podium. I don't know. I mean, they got... They got third in their region, and I know anything can happen from region to nas- nationals. Um, mm-hmm. It would take it would take a lot. It would take a lot. Um, I mean, you have North Carolina. You have Ethan Strand and Parker Wolf. Obviously, those are your two dogs. Those are your two front runners. And, you know, there's three, three through five that you still got to get in. But dude, they're 
they're strong too. If you have Wolf and Strand up there, I mean that's that's very few points coming in. Um, and then you also have Alabama is kind of a dark horse too. You know they they get second to Arkansas at SECs. They're a little bit of a dark horse. They're super strong. Obviously, they have another Kip Rob and they have a uh, Kip Rudu or whatever Kip Rodo, yeah. whatever however you say in there. Um, I mean, you have plenty of dudes who are absolute dogs at Alabama, and then you have the people hosting it. You have Wisconsin who are coming in then ranked number twelve. I mean, it's their it's their home course. And it is. His- I think it's. I think it's a. They're a little too far to actually take a chance at getting into the top three. I oh, wouldn't yeah, say. I, I wouldn't say it's an, an impossibility for them to break into the top 10. I would honestly quite expect them to finish in the top 10, even though they are ranked top 12, especially with that home course advantage. Uh, one thing that I just want to jump back to for a second when it comes to the two programs in BYU and NAU. And one of the things that I like so much about their programs is we both know when you look at a college running scene, there really is no two programs quite like BYU and NAU when it comes to the camaraderie and Mm -hmm. uh, how much the team is for each other. I think Stanford is slowly getting to that, especially with, you know, the Lex and Leo Young additions. Uh, I feel like, I feel like NIL kind of helps with that. I feel like when you get, you know, a couple people on the same NIL deal with like, you know, on or Nike, like I feel like kind of like bonds them together because you're going to make content with each other. You're going to be doing these deals together. It's kind of just bringing you together. And, you know, it's not like, it's not anything crazy or anything like that. It's not going to turn in a program into NAU or BYU. But I do think that those two programs where they are running for each other and you can see it in every race, every nationals that they go to, You know, these teams are not a team that you're just going to count out by any means. And I really do think that's one of the reasons why BYU is likely to be, you know, a top competitor at this race. And I think that's why NAU is going to probably surprise some people. And, you know, maybe they don't take top three, obviously. But I do think that it's going to be a great race out of those two programs. Just because when you look at some of these teams, when I look at Oklahoma, Arkansas, Iowa, you know, I see people that want to win. But I don't see teams that want to win for each other. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that that isn't the case at those schools. They just aren't established distance schools that you think about when you think about college cross country. And it's not to say, again, that they aren't that way. But, you know, NAU and BYU have really done great things to establish themselves as dominant schools when it comes to distance running that really promotes working with each other and being a team. And I think, you know, you see that with a lot of the things going on right now, you know, you have the Clayton uh, Young uh, documentaries that are dropping every week. Well, that were dropping every week. And, you know, him and Connor Mance are out there doing workouts every now and then with the cross country team. And you get to see how much they care about, you know, James Corgan when he qualified for Nats, same with Kenneth Rooks, or qualified for Nats, qualified for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And all the stuff that they do, it really does seem like a family out there. So it's it's really just something that uh, I think does go a long way, especially when it comes to cross country. When you're dying with a kilometer to go, what are you what are you doing to get yourself across that finish line? What are you thinking about? A lot of these kids are thinking about I can't let my team down, and that at the with a kilometer to to go, it goes a long way. So I thought I'd just toss that in there as you yeah. uh, continue talking about your teams, give you a chance to eat. No, of course, bro. I um, yeah. Obviously, NAU getting into the top three is going to be kind of I'm not a stretch, but it's definitely going to take a lot out of them. It's it's a hot um, take for a reason, you know. It is a hot take, dude, because they've been they've been bouncing around from like six to ten in the rankings. You know, maybe they cracked top five. I don't know, but um, I you're right, dude. It's Mike Smith's last year. Um, I would really like to see them go out on a on a big note. Um, obviously, I don't think they're going to win, but if they do, I'd be super happy to see that. Um, As would I. No, but I really like. I really think the team title is definitely between BYU, Oklahoma State. Um, I wouldn't be mad if I. I do want BYU to win. Um, and I know they've kind of been a powerhouse throughout the years, but I just like seeing someone new every single year. Mm. Um, and I, I like BYU. I think I get that they're old. Okay, I get that they go on. To your mission and they all come three back. of them are all three of those schools are you know what not, i mean and yeah. that's like that's like not unfortunate but it's just i like to see 
not it is, young. It is unfortunate. No, you it know is, what I mean. It, it you know is I mean. unfortunate because I want to see the. I don't want. I want a a, a freaking age limit. I don't want to see these twenty six year old men going up against twenty two and twenty one year olds when they're seniors and juniors in college. Yeah. And them losing to somebody four years older than them that should, uh, but they were literally starting high school when these kids were starting college. Like, I don't want to see these races, like, just to be, to be serious. I mean, I just don't. I'm not interested in that. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm not going to blow a gasket over those people because they're just abiding to the rules of the uh, NCAA. Uh, yeah, NCAA. And it, it does kind of suck, too, because, like, yeah, does it suck? BYU, literally, their reason for going is a religious reason and coming back two years later. I don't feel like, you know, what they're doing is, like, they're putting a lot of good into the world, whether you believe in that religion or not. You know, yeah. they do put a lot of good into the world, and what they're doing is helpful to a lot of people. They have a, a very large impact on people in other countries. And yeah. I don't think they should lose eligibility for having to go do that, or not even having, but volunteering, whatever the uh, way it is over at BYU. But at the same time, it's like, how do you decide whether or not, like, what's okay and how to do something like that? And I mean, that's hard. It truthfully yeah. is very difficult. So, and it, and it goes for the same thing with the kids in other countries. Some kids have to stay back or get held back and have to repeat grades. Not every country has the same uh timeline for school as us so you could have some of these kids out in you know africa europe asia all those different places and they're in school longer than we are and starting college at a later time and they shouldn't be told that they only get two years of eligibility in the ncaa system because they had to take school for longer but again at the same time your our bodies all develop at a very similar rate not the same but a similar when you're 26, you're going to be much more developed than somebody who's 19. It's not the yeah. same. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's, and that's the big problem. How do you fix that? The NCAA just doesn't care, obviously, because it's cross-country. Who cares yeah. about cross-country? We do. But it's just too small of a sport. So. No, I definitely get that. And I don't, it's just something that they're never going to do anything about. Because it's I mean, like, like you said, any other sport, I don't think it affects that bad. Um, I oh, do think... like, look like a sport look at a sport like football. It's not one person that impacts it. It's a team of how many people are out there at a time. You have a team of eleven, like 11 and then eleven on defense. So you have twenty two people minimum, not talking about special teams. You have this huge amount of team. If one or two guys is twenty six on that team, I mean, dude, they can get outclassed by you know a twenty year old absolute tank if they work, you know, or I shouldn't say if they work hard enough, but like, some people just have that level of talent, but at the mm. end of the day, football it's a t it's a hugely team specific sport. You have you can't just win with one person. Whereas in cross country, you can't win with one person, but you only need five, and yeah. that's a huge difference. When it, especially when it comes to the most participated sport in the world, we're not talking about how s slim you can't go to other countries and poach football players. You no. can with runners in every single country. There is not yeah. a country in the world that doesn't have runners. That's the problem. Yeah. I'm going to say it better. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, just, that's the truth. Yeah, that's just how it is. But um, regardless, I'm still excited Apologies, to watch yeah. it on Saturday. <laughs> oh, I'm unbelievably excited. You know what excited. I mean? Like, and, I'm, and again, I'm, really I'm not... I'm not going to take it out on the athletes themselves. It's not their choice. They're abiding to the rules. I'm not, I'm not mad with specific athletes. I just think the NCAA rules suck, and they need to change. So, anyways, uh, give me your top three men individually, will you? Top three men. Uh, Abtum, give me Wolf, and then give me... I think I already said, but I don't... Kiprop's just streaky, bro. I don't like it. I'd like to see Graham up there, dude. I mean, he's a defending champ. I, I'd at least like to see him get podium. But in my head, I'm thinking... He's had a really good it, season, though, to be fair. He's had a great season. And in my head, I think he's either thinking first or last. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think he's going to... 
I don't think so, to be quite honest with you. After ro watching him race the 5K time trial or the Olympic trials, I don't think he's thinking first or last. I think that experience right there and going to the Olympics changes your mindset completely. I think that he knows he's got it in him, and I think that he's going to go out there and go for the win. But I think that he realizes that, like, even if he doesn't get, you know, he was like, what, fourth for the 5K? And he still makes it in, and even if top three make it, because obviously Parker Wolf steps back. Like I think he mm -hmm. knows that there's an opportunity if you give it to yourself. And even yeah. if he takes third, it's still great for his stock. Like it doesn't it doesn't hurt him, you know? Yeah. What hurts him is taking fifteenth. Like uh -huh. that hurts him. And even fifteenth really probably doesn't, but you you know what I mean. Well, you convinced me. That's my top three. I think I like in, in that order. Sam Samuel Oh god, dude! Samuel Wolf. I'm, I'm a I'm a wolf. Graham, hungry like a wolf. Him. Really? Okay. I mean, I don't want to piggyback off you, but I I really you do can, like Parker can. Wolf, bro. Nah. I think you take. I think you take Parker. I think we both take Parker Wolf. Bro. Okay, fine. All right, all right, all right. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Parker. I'm gonna go Parker. Samuel. God, I just love Parker. Blanks. Yeah, I know you do. That's my pick. Top three for men. I'm definitely taking. I'm going. I love it. I'm. I'm going. I'm going. BYU, OK State, and then give me New Mexico. I actually really. I respect that pick. I think New <laughs> Mexico is. A, I think New Mexico is like the dark horse team. If I'm being quite honest, Iowa State too, but I think New Mexico more so because of Haptum. I think uh, if, yeah. he, if he drops, if he gives you a breadstick, if he gives you a breadstick, I mean that's huge. Just saying. I know. Uh, let's let's jump over to the women because we've been ranting about the men for so long. The women's yeah. feel like so short because we probably. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I don't know much. I will say I do have a pick for my number one. It's the Nutty Comb champion, and I don't want to butcher her last name, but um, it's Sadie from Villanova. Last mm. name Six Sigstead Sigstead. Yikes, dude. Oh, she's Canadian, bro. Uh, <laughs> what's your last name? It's S I G F S T E A D. Sig Sigstead. There you go. I, I probably butchered. I apologize. Well, Sadie's we'll never going to see this. It's all good. You don't think the girl from Florida is going to win? No, I, mean, I don't. Uh, what? I don't know. Hilda, her name. I want to say. I think it's Hilda. Something like that. Sure. I got to find her. Florida. Hold up. I got a Gators track and field. Go Gators. Um, let's see. It is... Oh, God. They have way too many posts on here. Here it is. Uh, yeah, it's Hilda Olemanoe. The NCAA That's South my Regional pick. Champ. That's Hilda? My pick. It's yeah, not a bad pick. pick. I do respect that pick. Um, but I, I don't... I. It's funny because <laughs> I don't even think many people are looking at Sadie as a potential top like a uh, top finisher. I but, she did uh, get third at regionals. But here's the thing, she won Nuttycomb. And I just I just put I just rate a win on that course very high. Well it's it's the Nats course. That's what I'm saying. I think a win at Nuttycomb, it's a difficult course, especially if it continues to snow. I don't know if you if your experience is it's white here. It snowed all day here. I saw that, yeah. Oh yeah, I posted on my story. I forgot. It's it's still snowing right now, and it's actually turning into rain. So that's probably not great. But if we look up Madison, Wisconsin, I wonder. It's it's pouring rain right now in Madison. That's not great. So, um, Saturday, brother. Saturday is going to be. Oh, what a beautiful day! <laughs> like five mile per hour winds. It, it, a little humid, ninety percent. You know, you don't you don't love that. Well, I guess it depends on when they race. Oh, never mind. It'll be much better by by nine o'clock. It'll already be down eighty five percent humidity. So that's yeah. I think great. it's at nine thirty or something. Okay, they'll be they'll, they'll be fine. They'll be all right. The real feel is actually like thirty degrees, which is for a, for a ten k thirty degrees is like perfect on in my opinion, of course. In your home, um, yeah, it'll be like thirty five. I think when they race, real feel thirty with like. Okay. Five mile per hour winds, which is really, really nice. So yeah, I think that's a that's a great, great day for some cross country. Um, yeah. So if we uh, if you don't want to talk about the well, I guess we really can't talk about it because neither of us know any of the female runners, unfortunately. I told um, you, bro. My pick's Hilda. 
Yeah, you got Hilda, I got Sadie, and that's our right. one one. That's our on the one. on the team side though, I will say BYU. BYU. Are you picking Oregon? Who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? I have an NAU. Out- oh, let's go, uh, NAU, brother. NAU. I have a Mike Smith master class. NAU going one. Oregon going two. BYU going three. Interesting. Um I think I'm going to go BYU, NAU, then give me West Virginia. Wow. And then I think pick. Oregon. Then I think Oregon. It's a, it's a good pick. I, I think, think West Virginia is pretty good. There. Yeah. I'm sorry to say that again? I, I said after Oregon, I think it's kind of up in the air. Yeah. I know I think, George, uh, Georgetown's always up there. Stanford. Uh, Providence. Yeah. Providence, bro. I mean, holy frick. Yeah, they came out of nowhere this year. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, well, a little bit out of that, not out of nowhere, but like, I mean, they Providence? are ranked. They they are ranked 11 to be fair, but yeah. So that's what um, I think. I think I think after four, I, I think it's up in the air. But you know, you never know what can happen. But yeah, I like I like BYU winning it all. Yeah, no, I do. Uh, I do respect that. I think. Um, I definitely think it's a possibility. To be quite honest with you, but it just depends. You know. I think uh, it's going to gonna depend on how they all do, uh, how it, they're all feeling, whether or not. Do they run first? Do the girls run first? Mm, I don't know. Let me look. NCAA. I kind of hope they run second low-key, just so like the conditions get a little better for them. Because I feel like the girls... I feel like it'll be a better day if the conditions are... Like a little bit better for the girls, and I want to see the guys going through it. Women's race will begin at ten twenty, followed by guys at eleven ten. Is that right? That's interesting. So actually, then it doesn't even matter. It's just going to be a great day for running, no matter what. Yeah, I don't know, brother. Why is it so hard to find? Oh well, I tried. Can't say I didn't. Okay, wait, no. What? Okay, that's Eastern. Wait, night. It doesn't matter. It don't matter. We'll figure it out by then. Anyways, so yeah, that's our that's our NCAA predictions. Do you have any other hot takes that you want to toss in there before we close it out? Because we've been uh, we've been yapping, to be honest with you. I got nothing else, dude. Got nothing else. I love to hear that. To be honest with you, um, I am racing next week. We're not going to do a pre. So am I. So am I. I thought we were going to keep that on the DL till next oh, week, but all good. Yeah, don't, don't tell. Don't tell. Never mind. That didn't happen. Act surprise next week. Act surprise, guys. Uh, if you make it this far, seven percenters, baby. Um. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, racing next week. We're going to do a pre-meet next week because I race on Thursday and we won't film the podcast that day. We'll film it beforehand. So you guys will actually know how I did before the podcast comes out, but it'll be a pre-meet, so it'll be weird. It's all good. I don't know why you're looking at me like that. Anyways, that's going to be it from the Blonde Boys this week. We hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. Love all things. We'll see you guys next time. Peace out.